Hi, it's Tina Brinkley Potts again, and today we'll be talking about why small businesses need online marketing and social media. And hey guys, why don't you guys introduce yourselves? Go ahead, Tony. Oh, hi. I'm Tony Tracy. I'm based in the United Kingdom, and I specialize as an e-consultant to small businesses in my local area. And that takes care of everything from online and offline and getting them out there marketing-wise. More often than not, we start with a consultancy, and then we get involved in the technical side of it and sometimes the training of that business owner or their staff. And that's kind of it in a nutshell. So, Greg, over to you. Okay, hi, I'm Greg Adams with Local Media Marketing, and we're a local um, mobile mobile company. We do mobile apps and uh, mobile websites, and so we help local businesses get found, uh, not just on uh, Google and Google Places, but as you know, everything now, everything is going uh, mobile with the uh, last month, the shipment of uh, P, uh, mobile devices outshipped the uh, PCs for the first time in, in histories, and there's five to one uh, mobile devices to the PC devices. So we help uh, local businesses. A lot of businesses uh, don't have a mobile-ready website, and we help those people uh, get found that way. Okay, okay. So let's kind of just jump right in, and let's start, let's talk about a company that, currently has very limited online or social media or mobile marketing, what would be the first thing each of you guys would tell them to do? Okay, do you want to go first? Yeah, go ahead. Go, Greg. Well, I just want to to say one quick thing. You know, first, you got to know your market. You know what? You need to do your research and find out who is your customer. You know, what what are their needs? Uh, the day of just kind of throwing stuff out there and hoping it sticks is, is no more. And we have these these tools and the, the things to to, uh, to do like surveys and polls and find out first what our customer is really looking for, and then we can uh, then then we can find out really what tools that we want to use. Okay. Well, Greg, I understand what you mean, but why don't you talk a little bit more about that? So. Because, um, like last week, Tony and I talked a lot about, you know, mom and pop organizations and being of that baby boomer age. And, of course, they were used to a different style of marketing. You just, like you said, cast a big net and hope you catch some fish. But we don't do that today. And so let's kind of talk a little bit about that. Well, it's just like with the uh, with the mobile apps. We're doing something with the Chamber of Commerce right now, and you know they would spend a bunch of money on just putting uh, these newspaper things out or the the, the uh, magazines and put them in, in different places and stuff. But now with the mobile apps, they can send it out to all of their constituents, you know, with 2,000 members of the chamber and push out the notifications. So they're not spending the money on all the the, the magazines and and hoping somebody. Sees it with this right here. They can uh, check in. Let's say I'm a diplomat of the chamber, so we go to an event, and they can act. We can actually check in and, and track all that stuff. So now we we can see who's on our network, people that are showing up, and, and really uh, track that. So now we can do uh, advertisement to those particular people, and we're not just throwing uh, stuff out in in the air. Does that make sense? Sure does. Mm-hmm. Tony? Okay, what I would go with this is, um, I'm just adding to what Greg has said there, is we have here, and I'm sure it's no different over in the States, here in the UK, the recession has hit so hard. We have, it's like saying a new generation of unemployed. We have people in their late 30s, 40s, 50s who have never been out of work, but they've always been an employee. They've always had things done for them. And what they're doing now is they're going down to start their own business or the self-employment route. But they don't know the basics because it's already been done for them. And the easiest and most economical way for them to get themselves out there is to have an online presence. So one of the things we do is we offer them a package, which is a basic WordPress site. Now, WordPress gives them control. It allows them to put their own content up. 
you 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 add that to a Facebook page, which gives them engagement with their market, and then you add that to a Twitter page, which gives them a traffic generator. So just that triangle of a WordPress site, a Facebook page, and a Twitter account will get them out there into their marketplace. It'll generate traffic, it'll generate interest, and hopefully generate leads. But going back to what Greg was saying there about doing the research, the trick nowadays is, as you, as you quite rightly said, we can no longer troll with a large fishing net here. Nowadays, it's down to fly fishing. You've got one service, and you, that's your fly, and you've got to make sure you're casting that in the right waters, and that's where your market is. So you're back to doing your research. The market research is brain-numbingly boring, no cost to do, but the tools are there. I mean, there's Google AdWords tools. There's all kinds of keyword research tools. You can find that immediately. What's a trending topic, like let's say on Twitter or on Google? What are people searching for? And I was reading some stats over the weekend, and this came out of Google here in the U.K. Google in the U.K. are saying that 50% of all the searches done on Google every day 50% are brand new searches. These are phrases and terms that Google has not indexed before. They've never come across them. And of that 50% of new searches, 50% of them are actually questions. So it's people want to know, how do I do this? How do I do that? How do I find this? How do I find that? And this is what people are using the Internet for. Now, if you were starting off today, self-employed, new business, whatever which way you wanted to say it, You've got to tap into what are people looking for that you can supply. Most people are asking questions. And most people are talking about these things on the likes of Facebook. So a basic WordPress site coupled with a Facebook page, that gives you your engagement and your base. And then the Twitter, you can talk about what you're doing, drive them to your Facebook page or drive them to your, your um, website. And that's really all you need, those, those three things. But you need to do the market research. I'm with you on that one, Greg. And a lot of people don't know where to start. And if, you but know, a simple I, tool. Yeah. Go, go I, do, ahead, I, agree, sorry, I agree with Greg. I think that um, I my the main question I ask is is who is your client? And you know, yeah. most people will say, well, everyone can use what I have. And I was like, okay, well, if that is your message, then you're not going to get anyone because you're not. You don't have a singular focus. I said, so tell me who's coming through your door the most. Tell me about that client. They all have some similarity somewhere that we can begin to target. And it isn't until you begin to ask yourself those questions can you really know how to get your business further faster. And I think that that's what's happening is that we, we, we um, the branding – philosophy that a lot of companies have. Well, most people don't have Coca-Cola dollars to be able to brand. So what you have to do is you have to understand who it is who could best use your service and go directly for them. But if you if you haven't done that market research in your business, if you don't start out with that, you're going to be going in too many different directions at once. Yeah. So, yeah. How much time do you think someone should spend on their marketing? <sighs> wow, God, you, you guys had the you, same look. You know that you both went. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I think I think I'll put on my former academic hat and talk about the Pareto rule and say 80-20. 80% marketing, getting your message out there, and 20% doing the business. If you don't I, I, when I used to uh, teach, I used to say in the business school, if you had the best factory, as in a Nissan car plant or something, and you were using Kaizen and all that, and you had fantastic um, employee relations and benefits and all that, that's all very well. You're going to end up with a warehouse full of cars or a car park full of cars until you start to market that product. Mm -hmm. And marketing is what pushes products. Sales at the end of the day is the face-to-face, belly-to-belly, eyeball-to-eyeball. But unless you tell the world about your product, you're just going to end up with a warehouse full of them. Okay? It yeah. goes the same for services. There's no point going out to a networking event and telling people, Hi, I'm an online media expert. I look after for you. 
it's just you know straight over the head. They don't know what you're talking about. You might as well be talking a foreign language. What you do say to them is things like, "Hi, I can get you more business. Are you interested?" And then they'll ask, "How are you going to do that?" It could be, "I can get you more leads. I can get you more business, or I can get more." Revenue out of your existing customers. That makes sense to most people. Using what I would phrase as a, industrial phrases or whatever is a, I'm a social media marketing expert or I'm a mobile marketing expert or whatever. People just say, yeah, sure, and they walk away. They haven't a clue what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. You, they need to know what you can do for them. And I normally say, what line of business are you in? And if the guy is selling blue widgets from a corner store, I say, how is that working out for you? And if he says, I could do it more footfall, I could do it more people coming through the door, they say, actually, that's one of my services. I can get people through the door for you. We should talk. And he doesn't know I do things online, and he doesn't care. He's, all he wants is, if you can get people through my door, I'll sell them. Just get them through the door. Absolutely. So we have to talk their language. So the problem then is, if, if we have, I was talking to a chap last night uh, on Skype, and he's an IT consultant. He's one of these redundant managers from a large corporate. He's been made redundant. Uh, he's in his early 50s, and he says, I'm going out as an IT consultant. And I said, yeah, but what are you going to be doing? Now, he thinks he's going to walk into corporates. And I said, but you just be made redundant. All the corporates are downsizing. They're not going to be hiring you. What else can you do with the same skill set? And basically, he said, well, I can show people in small businesses how to make the best out of IT. I said, now you're talking. Now you're talking. Like what? Because that's the service you offer. Don't come up with a title that nobody understands or cares about. Mm-hmm. So that's what I would. That's what I am saying to, to my local business owners, whether they're in startups or existing. Okay. You know. Yeah. Find out the old. The old adage has always been in marketing: find out what the customer wants and give it to them. Exactly. That's exactly what I was going to say, Tony. You know, I, I'm, yeah. I'm working with a, uh, you know, the chamber. What what they need. You know, that we're revamping their whole website. They changed. Uh, the, the, the people there, they've got an old static website. We're doing the mobile app, doing the mobile website. They're so, so, so behind like a lot of other businesses, but that's a whole different platform. And we're going to do the social media for them and these other things. But by another customer that's within the chamber, you know, he's a small, he's a small, uh, bot, uh, paint and body shop. And, uh, mm-hmm. met him at one of the, uh, the chamber events and he saw one of my little flyers when we had it at breakfast and he goes, you know, I need that. He understands that he needs, uh, you know, his, his, his deal is when people wreck their car, they need to find somebody fast and they're gonna, you know, if you're in an accident, you're not gonna wait till you get home or, or you might, but you know, a lot of people are, are looking right there on their phones and on their uh, mobile devices for, uh, who are they gonna call? Well, we'll tie it into a record service and tie it into him. So, you know, you have to ask them what is your target market and what is the best way that we can get customers to you. So, uh, to answer your, your question there, Tina, you know, it can, it can be all over the place. How much it depends on the size of the business and what actually their customers need, uh, for it. Some people are, you know, spend, uh, you know, 30, 30 minutes a, a day on their social media. And some people, they may just spend, depending on the size of the business, a couple of hours, you know, a day on it. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, so, and, you know, when someone comes to you and they're asking you what is the difference between online marketing, social media marketing, and mobile marketing, how do you guys answer that question? Greg, you want to start first this time? No, go ahead and let, go ahead and let Tony. We'll let Tony. Okay. okay. Well, what, one of the things is I, I would segment it by age, actually. Mobile marketing, I find a younger age group. Maybe anywhere from 18 to maybe 35-year-olds. They're the ones that buy smartphones more than the older age group. Yes, we all have a smartphone and we're older than that. But if you look at where that that bell curve is, it's those 18 to 35-year-olds are the ones that's buying the smartphones. So if I'm in a, in a uh, if I'm selling a service or a product that is primarily for that age group, I'm going to use mobile marketing to do it because I know. They're surgically attached to the mobile phone. It's as simple as that. So whether I use text messaging or mobile ads or whatever, I'll get to them through a mobile site. 
Now, if we want to move away from that, it, that's a, that's great if I was selling T-shirts or whatever. But let's say I'm selling some high-ticket goods and I'm selling to the 50-plus age group. Believe it or not, Facebook is ideal for that age group. Definitely. I think the biggest growth on Facebook is 35 to 55-year-old women or something like that. It's the yeah. biggest segment on Facebook. Definitely. So, So what you do is you look at these social media sites and you say, What's my target audience? Now, where do they hang out? And that's where you put your effort. Now, I put a lot of effort in locally into my LinkedIn groups. There's a lot of local LinkedIn business groups. They may only have 100 to 200 members, but they're local business owners, so I network in there. I get a lot of leads from them. So it, it really depends what's your product or service, what's the ideal age group, where do you reckon they hang out, how can you join in the conversation? And that's where you go. You don't necessarily have to go to all the social networking, social media sites. Find out where the bulk of your market hangs out. That's where you go. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? I agree so I don't differentiate. I don't say online marketing is different from social media. It's different from mobile. They're, it's a, they're tools to engage. Yes. Okay. Find out where your market hangs out. Go engage with them on, in that marketplace. Mm -hmm. Right. The, the, what a lot of people don't realize, people, a lot of people heard of Facebook, Twitter, and, and MySpace and YouTube and all that. But uh, what a lot of people don't realize, there's over 200 uh, plus social media sites out there. There's some just for uh, mothers at home. You know, there are some just for fishing. Uh, there's mm -hmm. social networks for uh, different colleges just uh, just for that. So there's literally hundreds and hundreds of uh just for cooking shows, there's networks of uh, social networks just for cooking. So if your target market, you know, if you're trying to sell cooking products, that would be you're more apt to, to, to get than that. Just like Tony was uh, saying with LinkedIn, I have a customer that uh, uh, sells high-end. Uh, she's a mediator for uh, high-end gas and oil companies, and, they, and she negotiates million-dollar deals. Now, she doesn't want to be on Facebook. It has no value to her, but, you know, she gets one deal. We set her up, and... Uh, I'll let, uh, you know, Tony's got a great couple presentations on uh, how to set up LinkedIn. He's brilliant with it. And so I, I shared that with her, and she's like, wow, you know, this is really great, and, and her business is really taking off. You know, she needs one or two jobs a month to, to sort of, you know, to make her money. And, and uh, these were multi-million dollar deals, so you can imagine how much money she's making off of it. But she's connected with people on there that she hasn't, uh, when we got her set up, she was finding people that she hadn't talked to in 20 years. And, uh, and, and just started connecting with them and actually got invites. So she, her business just literally turned, as soon as she got it set up, it just turned on overnight. So, yeah, just depending on your target market, uh, what kind of business you're in, to, to which uh, social networks that you, that you want to be on. Mm -hmm. I agree. Um, I think one of the things I tell my clients or new clients, prospective clients that come my way, is um, I believe at some point you're going to want to have a form in all three segments, whether it's online, mobile, or social media. Um, yeah. So where I would tell them to start is kind of the rule of thumb I use is if most people used to find you in the phone book, then you should be doing online things like Google Places and all of that first. Not exclusively, but first. Um, mm -hmm. If you are used to doing more referral-based marketing because there's a lot of offline systems that I used to teach um, to get referral-based things going. If you do that, then you definitely should be on Facebook, Twitter, and things like that, and LinkedIn for the referral-based. Um, and if you're in entertainment, then mobile is the better way of going. So that's normally the rule of thumb to start, but of course I would want them to become, you know, multi-dimensional and be on every platform at some point in time. Mm -hmm. So yeah. there is there is a case for hang on my phone is ringing. Yeah, you take it so oh, sorry. two phones are ringing. <laughs> sorry, all the phones are ringing all of a sudden. Uh, what was I going to say? Yeah, there is a what, what, what you're saying there, uh, Tina, is it's about getting all your ducks in a row. Yes. Yes, it is. But one of the things is, when I talk to local business owners, 
Now, there's a chap who runs a an emergency plumbing service, and he has five okay. other plumbers with him, so there's him, so there's six of them. And he was saying, you know, he spends a lot of money every year for his one-page ad in the Yellow Pages. And I was saying, well, you don't have to spend anything like that. I'll take that off the hook. Uh, why don't you just have a mobile site? Because anyone who needs an emergency plumber, you know, if they find you on their mobile, it's going to be easier. So let's put a mobile site together, and you can communicate, obviously, with your other plumbers, that, you know, on a daily basis through their mobiles. These are people who operate out of their van. That's where their tools are. They don't have a place to go to every day. It's just, yeah, there's one office type of thing. But if you put six of them into it, there's no room. These guys are on the road doing emergency calls. So all he needed was a mobile website. Mm-hmm. Not only can his own employees connect with him and, and, and text him or whatever and leave messages, but his local marketplace, if you like, what he has is a local Google Places with an emergency mobile number. Maybe. That's yeah, it. No address needed. Very honest and he does it, and well, it works. Thanks very much. Cause now, it seems like he was spending about, the industry, so I think it's £6,000 a year for a one-page mobile right, site. Now, mm-hmm. now £6,000 sterling is about $9,000 a year for a one-page yellow page ad. You know, which is not sexy or exciting, and he's in there in alphabetical order where all this competition. But give him a Google Places listing that's well optimized with an emergency number, you know, need a plumber now, dial this number. You know what I mean? Mobile website did it for him. That's all he needs. You know, I you know. I think um, talking about uh, yellow page ads could be a whole other conversation. <laughs> so instead of, oh, yeah. instead of just concentrating on the yellow page ads, let's talk a little bit about offline marketing. And what do you say about do you abandon what you used to do? Do you incorporate it? What, what's your rule of thumb? What advice do you give your clients? Oh, definitely uh, incorporate it. Yeah, de- definitely incorporate it. I mean, we still pick up magazines. I mean, you look in your mail every day. I get, I get mail every day. I tell the clients, just look through your mail. Uh, the local Toyota dealership, uh, the the hair salon, all these people are still sending out, and people still look at magazines. But put your QR code, and for people that don't know, that's mm-hmm. quick response code. It's a little uh, 2D barcode that that uh, you can scan that will actually take to the website. Uh, one one uh, project that we're doing right now uh, here in Houston is, a, and we'll have it here done in, in a couple of weeks, uh, is a restaurant, and we're doing what we call video billboards. And what this is, we're actually taking down their menus, so they have a chain of restaurant, and they have these really, I mean, they're nice menus, but we, uh, you have to change the prices, and you have to take them down and put new, you know, print new, and every time something comes out, you got to print something new. Mm-hmm. Well, with these video billboards right here is we actually... I have a graphic designer, and we um, are streaming their menu or and uh, and advertisements on that, so they can have actually uh, recipes on there. They can have the streaming news. Uh, mm-hmm. They can have any any other kind of stuff they want on there. So it's definitely incorporated it's still within the business where people can see it. Uh, it's just it's just a different type of of media. But that's still that's still old school, and that's still the traditional type of media. People still want to be able to see stuff and read stuff. We we still have to be where our customers are at. We can just mm-hmm. use some of the newer technologies to to uh, connect with them. And, and I guess, Greg, I'd like to jump in there and say, um, know if the dollars you're spending is working. So. I know some companies that still, you know, when their phone rings, they're still not asking, how did you find out about us? So yeah. they don't know yeah. Yeah. if that yellow page ad is working or they're just spending those dollars and not really get it. They don't really know which mechanism is working. So I, so I say make sure you know by asking the mm-hmm. appropriate questions, training your staff to ask the appropriate questions. If it's not working, I don't think you should allow anyone to tell you anymore that you're doing this for branding purposes. If you're not getting calls from spending $9,000 a year, then I I really think you should be looking other places to spend that money. So that's 
I just wanted yeah, to add got, that because I, I think what you said was yeah, perfect. I got yeah, I got caught in that years ago. That's how I kind of got. I have my own local uh, water treatment company that I've had for like 20 years, and that's that's how I literally got into this business was trying to survive and learn how to, uh, you know, I knew there had to be something different because I was being sold, you know, Yellow Pages ads and got killed at it. Mm-hmm. And, and it's called the, the, you know, so well, there's so many people in this Yellow Pages, and what I learned, the hard lesson that I learned was it's, it's called fallacy of numbers. We say, well, there's X amount, it's going to X amount of people, then I get this X amount of exposure, but it's really, it's, it's, it's a fallacy of numbers because in reality, I just got lost in a book that nobody opened up and, and I lost, I lost thousands of dollars on, on that there. So uh, that's why I started digging into doing video marketing and, and, uh, in this online marketing and mobile marketing and social marketing. And, and that's when it really started to, to pay off because I could, I could measure, I could measure my results. You know, I started doing some videos and just doing some simple how-to videos. And I've got a couple out there that's right now. I did uh, actually two years ago this month, March in 2010, I got over 25,000 views on it. I still, matter of fact, while ago, I just got a call on one of my videos I did. I usually get three to five calls a week just off a little video that I did. It's made me, I, I don't know exactly uh, the number right now, but it's thousands of dollars that I've made off of it. But I track it. I know where it's coming from. Mm-hmm. So, uh mm-hmm. Yeah, you can incorporate what you're you're you're, you're currently doing, uh, and um, and like you said, Tina. I mean, now you're you can measure your return on investment, and that's what that's what I was after. Where you know, okay, I don't mind spending X amount of dollars, but you know, what is my return on investment? Is it working for me? And and if it don't, I've tried some things that didn't work so well, and I was able to like, okay, this is not working as well for me as I wanted to, so I move on to something else. But now mm-hmm. I, I know the metrics, I know the numbers. Well. Yeah. That's a perfect question. I've had several clients that have come to me after they've worked with some type of online internet marketer. And let's say they measured their success in how many likes they got or how many followers they got and all of that kind of stuff. And then they were not happy and by the time they come to me I literally have to kind of dissect what happened with that other person before I can get them to move what do you guys say is a great way to know if you're hiring the correct person to help you with your business oh that's that simple did something ring either your phone or your tail your cash register Right? It doesn't matter how much you're spending. If at the end of the day that campaign went out there and your phone didn't ring or your cash register hasn't rung, that's been a waste of money. Simple as that. We're living in an instant world. I can put a tweet up right now to say, click here to view my download or view my video or viewer. And I can tell within five minutes how many people are viewing it. Where It's instant. Okay? Mm-hmm. So... If I say, ring ring me for, you know, a discount coupon, and I have a particular phone number set up, you can rent a mobile phone number for a dollar a month, okay? It doesn't cost much. You can rent them off Twillow or whatever the name of that company is, dollar a month. So you can put out one mobile phone number and say, phone me, and I'm going to give you the code to get you a discount off a burger. It doesn't matter what you're giving the discount on. That phone's going to start ringing, and you know whether that campaign is working or not. Mm-hmm. And that's a simple $1 a month phone number and a free Twitter account. You know whether it's working or not. So if anyone's walking through your door with a huge contract, with lots of zeros at the end of it looking for a signature saying, you know, we're going to make you rich by next Tuesday. No, he's going to get rich by next Tuesday, not you, okay? <laughs> Just say, let's, you know, hey, come off. We've, we've all been there. I, I tell people, look at why don't we try something? Yeah. Won't cost you anything. Let's let let's do a tweak on what you've got. Let's try something. Let's see what the result is. If it works, I'll scale it up. If I do that, pay me. If it doesn't work, I'll find something that will for you in your market with your product, with your service. I don't mind testing with them, mm-hmm. but I got to prove myself. I got to say, let me tweak this. Let me tweak that. 
you know, if you have an existing website, it's not getting found, let me have a look at your keywords. Let's change one or two things. Let's see if you come up. You'll know when you're coming up in search. You're probably the only one that's searching for you, for God's sake. You know what I mean? But you'll know if you're coming up, whether it works. Now, I can scale that up for you and get you found everywhere. Then pay me. So that's the way you do it. You can't do the same with a yellow page as I had. You can't say, you usually order it and pay for it six months before publishing. Yeah. And then it's out for a year. So you pay the money. It's taken 18 months. And the phone doesn't ring. What was the point? Give me 10% of that and I'll make your phone ring tomorrow morning. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's an instant world. Right. But that's as simple as it gets. Yep. You know, yeah. it, that's, you it doesn't get any simple. You get a hold of you and talk to you, Tony? Oh, you can. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I, what I mean by that is, is I mean, and that's, it, you're, you're right on target there, Tony, because uh, just a couple of hours ago, I... I my wife's phone rings, and my phone rings all the time. People are trying to to uh, sell me market. They don't have a clue. It's somebody sitting in a call center. I, I had set up. I'm just going yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and they 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 know nothing about your business, and all they want to do is 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 get you to sign up for something. But they they have no idea anything about you. Uh, mm -hmm. My wife just got one here a couple of hours ago, about three hours ago. Uh, I had set her up a, a a website for a product. And they just, I guess they scraped it off there and they called her, called her number and was trying to sell her marketing. And they had no idea, you know, what the business was or, or, or they're just sitting there cold calling and they want you to sign up for a, a service and they, they don't ask you any uh, buying questions, anything about your business. I oh, will just try this out and, and, uh, then they're gone. You have no way of getting a hold of them. There's no tech support. And so I'll, uh, to answer your question, Tina, I think when somebody is, um, trying to get their business going, they need to consult with somebody locally that's, that has their best interests, and like what Tony was talking about there, that's actually going to say, look, try me out for a little while and, and, and tell me what you're exactly doing. Let, let them learn a little bit about your business and, and, and be able to apply it to, to your business. And uh, yeah, uh, be with a person, that's something that I just cannot stand is is being able to not be able to have any kind of uh, tech support and be able to somebody to understand me and understand my business and they should look for somebody that that truly you know puts their business first and that they can uh, have a conversation with and and I think that yeah uh, I I tell people I, I, I go to like I, I know you're involved in your local chamber of commerce there I I, I do that too here in the UK lots of networking monthly meetings or whatever but I, I I'm genuine when I say to people look at I want to be successful and I can't be unless I make you successful. Right, and I, I want you as a long term. I want you as a long term client. I don't want to earn a hundred books out of you today and never see you again. I'd rather you give me a hundred books every time I saw you. I want to be successful, and I can only do it by making you successful. So let me have a look at what you got. Let me see can I panel beat it or knock it into shape in some form. Uh, we'll tweak it as we need to go. If I can find something that works better than what you're doing right now, hey, pay me to scale it up and make it happen all the time. Mm -hmm. It's, and they have to be willing to forward. listen to you too, though, right, Tony? Yeah. 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 But I, I tell people, I know nothing about your business. I know nothing about your products or your services. Let me have a look. Anyone that, we get phone calls here looking for the transportation manager or the fleet trucking manager. We're a virtual company with websites, for God's sake. Do they not bother <laughs> when they're on our website looking for our phone number to read what we do? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. You know, who heard of a website developer that had a fleet of trucks on the road? For God's sake, pay attention, you know what I mean? <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but, sorry, I'm sounding off. But what I'm saying is, if you're going to be a local online marketing consultant, or whatever phrase you want to use, mm -hmm. that actually means getting to know your local business owners and working with them and they working with you. Yes. And it's, and it's going to be a learning curve for them because we know so much and, and, all, and we, we, it's our fault. We use jargon without meaning to. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's probably people listening into this and we've used terminology that the three of us know everything about and we know what we're talking about and they're saying... They're talking right. Italian or they're talking French or whatever. You know, I don't know what they're talking about, right? So it's really about getting to know the local business. And the local business owner should be able to say to us, how can you get me more 
people through my shop or my store door? Or how can you get my phone to ring? Or how can you get, how can you help me shift product? You know what I mean? Say, so, let's have a look at it. Let's have a meet. No obligation. There's no cost. Let's have a meet. Show me what you do and how you're doing it. Maybe I'll come, I can come up with an easier or better or a cheaper way of doing it. That's all it takes. Yeah. And who's going to say no to that? Oh, no one should at this point. No. <laughs> but you do get people who think that they paid, you know, we paid thousands and thousands of dollars for our website, you know, and, and because we paid that figure, therefore our web developer is fantastic. And you're just saying, now hang on a minute. How, how is the site working out for you? Are you getting sales? Are you getting leads? Oh, yeah, but we pay thousands of dollars for it. I say, you know something? I'd probably get you more business for a $100 site if it was done properly. The actual value of what you spent on that site has, bears no relation to the amount of business you're getting in off it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I did, an interview about, I did an interview about that very topic about a month ago. And the first thing that I was telling the business owners was, if you cannot keep comparing what you previously spent and hope that that's going to bring you future dollars, because if you have the old style programmed or website, you're already behind the curve because right now we're more into content management. So if your site takes a programmer to change. The phone number. Yeah. Forget about it. Probably a costing you business right now. Yeah. Use a $100 WordPress site. You can change the phone number every day of the week yourself. And it's as simple as that. But what it's about at the end of the day is the recession, the economic recession worldwide is there. What we need to do is find the business that still exists out there. There are still people in business. There are still people shopping, spending money, whatever course there are. But what they are doing is they're becoming very discerning. We're asked to price an awful lot of things these days. And I know half the time if we tender for something, they're taking that tender document and they'll stick it under somebody else's nose and say, can you do the same cheaper? You know what I mean? Okay, I have no problem with that. Money's time for everybody. But I prefer not to tender for projects. I, tend, I, I prefer to say, let's have a look at it. Let's see what we can do. Let me test something. If you and I is both happy with that test, then we'll talk about what it's going to cost to scale it up. Because I could spend all day, every day, and every night putting tender documents and proposals together. It's not going to get me anywhere. Right. You know and, what I mean? And, and I think okay. I do something similar to what you do, but um, I, you know, I sell results. I don't. I don't sell. Yeah. Um, Likes. I don't sell followers. I sell results. Mm -hmm. um, there are some times when, you know, the, the, like you said, the end result is the phone ringer or the cash register ringing. It's got to be either or. And if <laughs> if those two things aren't happening, then I, then I'm not doing my job. If if they are, then the proof is in the pudding. Yeah. I, I, I've had people approach us. I've, I've had a corporate approach us and say, look at that, we're paying a fortune, which they were paying a fortune. So I saw the bill, a, poor, a fortune every year to a public, public relations company just to keep our brand out there on the Internet. And I said, well, if I was to put your brand on the Internet, first of all, it's only a website and a logo, and I'd make sure you get your, it's well keyworded so you come up in all the searches for it. I said, what are they doing? And they said, I don't know. I said, okay. Ask them what they're doing for the money because that's how you get your brand out there these days. Yeah. That's how it works. Yeah. Just have a well optimized website. There's your brand out there. There's your brand. Yep. Yep. So I guess before we close out, what would be your final advice to the company that is looking, let's say they've already hired someone to do something for them and they've been burnt. What would you okay. say I to them for the, to get them going again? Well, I got a perfect example of that. My Back to my uh, paint and body guy. He, uh, Before I met him, he was uh, trying to save some dollars, so he got an employee there to put him up a website. 
and I uh, don't know how much traffic he was getting on it, but he had him a website, so uh, he, but he was disgruntled. Uh, the guy ended up having to let him go, so the guy destroyed everything that he had, and so he didn't have a website. He didn't have anything. The only thing he still owned, uh, luckily, was still he had bought the domain, and he owned the domain, so we had to go in and... Um, uh, I had to rebuild the whole website and a, and a mobile website for him. So sometimes you get what you pay for there, and, and uh, he was just trying to be uh, uh, cheap on it, you know, trying to save himself some money. And we all got to save some money down. Like Tony said, you know, we're in a, an economy, but you, you have to be able to be in, con- in control of it too. So find somebody locally that's in the business that, just like the paint and body guy there, I wouldn't, I can't paint my own car. If I did, I mean, maybe it was a rollers and spray can, but uh, it wouldn't look too good. So and I would probably end up spending more on it trying to get the right parts and get it done and, and redo it several times myself than if I would have took it to him the first time uh, and let him do it. I mean, he has the, the paint booth. He has the right chemicals. He has the right tools to do it. And so do, so do we in this business. You know, I've, I've been doing this for several years now, and I know you two have, have well, y'all got more experience than me, me, but it takes a lot of time and a lot of effort to do this, and we have to stay on top of it every day for the changing technologies to keep up with, with everything that's going on. So, you know, my advice to the local guy is find you somebody that the business, small business, will find somebody locally that, that does this every day for a living and, and hire them and, and, and do it small. You're doing a small scale. If you've been burned before, you know, don't go big. Like Tony says, try it, try it out a little bit. Just do something small, measure it, see your return on investment. And then if you're comfortable with it, take baby steps. And then, and then if you, you know, if you're getting back, you spend a dollar and you're getting back, you know, five dollars, then hey, okay, we, we see this working for us. Now let's see what else we can do for you and let's scale it up from there and take your baby steps. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. T- totally agree with you. Uh, I, I think the problem that has been, which is just in our neck of the woods here in the UK, is the people that have been burned, uh, those businesses, have been burned by what I would call old school web developers who charge an arm and a leg for a website. Mm-hmm. And it looked good, whatever, but it wasn't, it wasn't optimized, so Google didn't find it. So they weren't coming up in search. Uh, it wasn't sticky. It was more or less like a, just a, a brochure. You know what I mean? It, it didn't. It didn't tell the, the visitor to decide what to do next or how to do it. Mm-hmm. And and that's where they got burnt. They spent a lot of money on an online brochure that never worked for them. Mm-hmm. The world has moved on now. And as I said earlier on, if if you can combine. Uh, a simple website like a WordPress website with a Facebook page and a, and a free Twitter account, that's going to be, that is light years away yeah. from what you spent your money on that burnt you. Mm-hmm. It's not only really light years away, but it's, it's, it's so cheap to do, but so effective. That's all you need these days. Yep. Right? So, hence I say, let's try something small, let's tweak something, let's see what's going to happen in your marketplace. I don't know your customer. You do. Mm-hmm. Now, let's see. You tell me about them. Let's see where they're hanging out. Let's go find them. Let's go talk to them. Well, so you that's know, what I would do. If you've been burned. Even though I said that was going to be the last I lied, we got to do one more. Because <laughs> Tony keeps talking about WordPress sites. I keep talking about content management. And you know what? The same thing. Like you said, but like you said before, we're using all of this jargon that a lot of people yeah. may not know. So... Tony, please take it away. Tell them why <laughs> okay. you must have a content management, whether it be WordPress, Joomla, Drupal, who are no, 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 you don't need them. No, WordPress is an open source platform yes. that helps you design websites. Uh, Joomla and Drupal were previous incarnations of it, and they are now old hat. Okay. What it means is any anyone, even a child, could put a WordPress site together. The beauty of it is it is pre-built to suit the search engines. Now, we call that content management. In other words, the search engines can index it. So it's actually a content management system, okay? But we just call it a WordPress website, which means you 
let's say, Greg, you know nothing about this type of thing, and you're 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 a new potential client of mine. I say, Greg, I'm going to set it up for you. Here's how you log into the back end. Here's where you put your your image. You want to stick a video up, click this button. You want to put some text in, put this in here. You want to change your phone number, it's on the contact page. You can change it all you want, okay? You're in total control, off you go. Press save, and it's live, and that's it. Don't have to phone anybody. That's beautiful. Now, what is beautiful about it, and I'm not being technical here, is it's written in a computer code that's the exact same code that Twitter and Facebook and LinkedIn is written in. So, all of a sudden, it's like having four Lego bricks. They just come together. Mm -hmm. So, if you want to put the icon for your Facebook, you know, click here and you go to my Facebook page, or click here to tweet me, or click here to go to me. Hey, they're just Lego bricks. Mm -hmm. Well, and it works. And it's just point and click. So, that's where it's gone today. And believe me, that is... So economical to do, it's unbelievable. You're not talking about thousands of dollars. You're only talking about maybe a couple of hundred dollars. You, you are really talking about it's very affordable. Yes. For anyone, even a startup. You could put it on your credit card. It's that affordable. You know what I mean? Yes. Greg, okay. what do you think so about this works. whole content management versus the old style website? Well, far far better. It is if yeah, it's yeah, built yeah, for the you, search engine. You said it all right there. I, I agree exactly what... What Tony's saying right there, it's, it's, uh, you know, coming from doing, uh, Dreamweaver and trying to do all this code, uh, you know, now with, with the, uh, with WordPress, this platform and, and they have what they call plugins in there and these plugins help you do other special little things that you want to on that site if you want to, uh, add a video or, or any other kind of things. You're very customizable. So, um, it's just another WordPress, Lego brick. Yeah. It's exactly. Just another Lego brick. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yes. It's not yeah. difficult. Tina, if this was difficult, do you think I'd be doing it? <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys, why don't you guys tell us one more time who you are, what company you're from, and a closing word. Greg, off you go. Okay, okay I'm uh, Greg Adams with a uh, local media advisor, and uh, again, we're a uh, we specialize in mobile media uh, marketing for local businesses, for uh, local uh, websites and uh, apps. And uh, you can contact me through um, my website at local uh, localmobileadvisor.com. And my uh, number is 281-353-0807. And, um, okay, Tony, that's to you. Okay, I'm Tony Tracy, and the company and the website is eConsultants.it. And if it's online or offline and you're a local business, or and we do have international clients, that's where you go, info at eConsultants.it, drop me an email. Or you can Skype me at Tony Tracy. I'm available. And uh, I was around before social media, okay? So. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, thank you guys. Uh, and I'm Tina Brinkley Potts, and you can find more of these type panel discussions at tinabrinkleypotts.com. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Tina. Okay, thank you. We're out of here. <laughs>